The Germans want to deploy 4,000 troops into Lithuania, and I'm actually surprised that this is not considered big news. I mean, this is the country that started two world wars, and now they're talking about sending thousands of troops into Lithuania, which... Uh, was a country that Nazi Germany took over. Germany has an historic interest in Lithuania, given the fact that it is a country that borders with Russia, Germany's greatest historical enemy. Today, still, Germany's greatest enemy. Now, this is not something that the Germans are saying that they are suggesting. They're not saying, oh, you know, we're just simply thinking about sending 4,000 troops into Lithuania. This is something that they are saying they want to do and that they plan on doing. Now, it's going to take years before something like this uh, could be completed because they still need to have the adequate infrastructure to hold 4,000 troops in Lithuania. So they still need to build up the needed infrastructure Structure, and they say that this should be completed by the year 2026. So it's going to be a while from now. But still, I mean, this is the country that started two world wars. This is the country that is growing again as a superpower. This is the country that has still aspirations for real politic, for uh, being a being an international global force, because. You know, ever since the Second World War, the end of the Second World War, the Germans have been under the control of the United States. But now, you know, within the, I would say within uh, the last past, uh, within, within the last past decade, let's just go with that. Uh, the Germans have been talking seriously about uh, being more of an autonomous superpower. I mean, it's not just, oh, we want uh, semi-autonomy. No, the Germans are aspiring to be completely uh, independent of American power. This is uh, their goal. It's been openly there really since, uh, probably since the 1990s. Uh, but it's been seriously talked about, I would say, since Brexit. I mean, once Brexit happened, the Germans really went into third gear with their rhetoric about independence from uh, the United States, independence from being controlled by NATO, wanting to be more of uh, a superpower. Because, you know, people will look at this news about Germany wanting to deploy 4,000 troops and they'll say, well, you know, they're simply going to do this under the umbrella of NATO. But the Germans want to be independent of NATO. You know, one of the reasons why Germany joined NATO was to prevent any sort of suspicions from Germany's uh, European neighbors. Because, I mean, let's be real, Germany has a huge criminal record. It's like you have a neighbor with a huge criminal record. You know, he's been uh, charged with murder. He's been imprisoned for murder. He's been he's been imprisoned for all sorts of crimes. And now he's your neighbor. Of course, you're going to be more than suspicious of this person. So Germany has um, has its neighbors that are terrified of it, all right? And, and, and understandably so, given its history. I mean, I don't know if you guys are history buffs, but Germany has quite a, a track record of crimes, pretty serious crimes. Uh, and, and so according to Henry Kissinger, because I'm almost done reading this book, I've been, you know, reading this book on and off for months now, Kosovo Crisis, by uh, Vojan Joksimovic, a Serbian writer. And he wrote this book in the late 90s. And he references Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger, in August of 1999, wrote an article for the Los Angeles Times. He wrote the reasons why certain European countries joined NATO. So he says, NATO has given Britain the framework for its special relationship with America. To Germany a safe haven from European suspicions and Eastern dangers. So one of the reasons why Germany joined NATO, other than the fact that it had to, I mean, it was the loser in World War II and America was the biggest victor alongside the Soviet Union. Uh, so you being the loser have to follow orders. But one of the reasons why Germany saw joining NATO as an advantage was to guard it from suspicions by its neighbors. So it says here, to Germany, joining NATO was, quote, a safe haven from European suspicion. So when I hear about Germany wanting to deploy 4,000 troops into Lithuania, I am also suspicious of this. 
oh, I'm not suspicious at all. And I have no concerns about this at all because, you know, this is all within NATO. Well, let's just ignore history, right? Let's just ignore pretty recent history. So Henry Kissinger went on to say that there is a revolt going on within NATO. And this is what uh, Voynich Simovich writes here in regards to Kissinger's article. The EU leaders affirmed the urgency of creating a separate military force capable of acting without the United States and without NATO. To Kissinger, this implies, quote, and these are the words of Kissinger, a revolution in the structure of the West. So even in the late 1990s, there was a revolution going on within NATO. The Europeans wanted to start their own military force. Kissinger concluded that the sole motive is to escape United States tutelage and to increase European bargaining power. Quote, if the quest for independence is driven largely by anti-American motives, it will saddle the alliance with all the compulsive competitiveness that nearly destroyed Europe before NATO was founded in 1949. Right there in the late 1990s, there was a revolution, or not a revolution, but there was a desire for a revolution against NATO. This uh, desire to be free of American power more and more clearly manifests itself every single year. Every year. I mean, ever since Brexit, you really begin to see this manifestation of revolt uh, make itself more and more uh, conspicuous. 2017 hit, you had Angela Merkel doing a speech saying that she could no longer trust uh, the Americans nor the British, and she basically said that the days of relying on the US and on Britain are over, or at least getting close to being over. As America returns back more and more to its legacy of isolationism, you're going to be seeing uh, the rise of Germany. The Germans have a history in Lithuania. During the Second World War, the Germans took over Lithuania. There were a lot of Lithuanian nationalists who supported the Third Reich, who loved the Third Reich. The reason being that uh, the greatest enemy to the Lithuanian nationalists, uh, other than the Soviets, were the Poles. Because after World War I, uh, Poland took control over the Vilno region of Lithuania. There was a, uh, a paramilitary organization like the OUN in Ukraine. It was called the LAF, the Lithuanian Activist Front. They were armed and trained by the Germans. And once the Germans took control of Lithuania, took over Poland, uh, they told these Lithuanian nationalists, go ahead, go forth, do what you will, unleash hell. And so these uh, LAF guys, every single day, were just butchering and raping, and they killed thousands upon thousands of people, committing war crimes, atrocities every single day, just like that movie, uh, Come and See. So this is uh, Germany's bloody history in Lithuania. And in Lithuania today, there are still a lot of nationalists. There are still a lot of people who sympathize with Nazi Germany. So when I hear about Germany wanting to put troops in, thousands of troops in Lithuania, given its recent history, um, I'm definitely concerned. Especially given the fact that Germany right now is aspiring to becoming the greatest military power in Europe right now. So in light of all of this, it's pretty damn worrying in light of the fact that Germany tried to rule over all of Europe during the Second World War, in light of the fact that Germany uh, wants to uh, be free of American control, in light of the fact that Germany wants to be uh, the most powerful military in Europe, yeah, yeah. given its track record, <laughs> I find this to be uh, concerning, to say the least. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.